Hello everyone and welcome to Wisdom Dojo. Today we're going to be reading Jack and the Beanstalk. Enjoy! Once upon a time in a valley was a village. On the outskirts of the village stood a small run-down cottage. And in that cottage lived a widow with her only son Jack. They were very poor. This was clear to see from the ragged clothes on their backs and the worn-out shoes on their feet. But as the story goes, they did possess one item of real value, a gorgeous caramel-coloured cow. Jack woke up early every morning and milked the cow, poured the milk into a jug and set off to the cheese maker. The milk was only worth a few pennies, but Jack didn't mind. He happily accepted the pennies from the local cheesemaker, bought a few potatoes from the market and returned home. Jack did this every day. One year, a terribly harsh winter hit the village. Great howling winds blew and the snow lay in huge drifts, never before seen by the villagers. The following spring, the grass did not grow. Without grass, the cow had nothing to eat and soon became too weak to produce milk. Mother, cried Jack, I cannot get a single drop of milk from our dear cow this morning. Alas, the widow replied, I feared this day would come, and so it has. Jack, my dear boy, it's time to sell our precious cow. Take her to the market and auction her to the highest bidder. Jack looked sad. But mother, he said, without our daily milk from the cow, we'll soon run out of money. And then what will we do? Don't worry, Jack. We'll think of something, she replied. Jack sat down to the village with the cow. Before he reached to the market, he came across a friendly butcher. The butcher wore a blue and white striped apron, a straw hat, and carried a small green drawstring bag. The butcher approached Jack and said, Hey, what a fine cow you have there, young man, he said, patting the cow firmly. I'm selling her, said Jack. Are you indeed? Yes, said Jack. My mother told me to go to the market and only sell her to the highest bidder, for she is extremely valuable. I can see that, replied the butcher. That is why, he continued, I'm going to give you a once in a lifetime offer, an offer worth no less than a thousand times more than what you will receive from anyone else at the market. Jack looked up at the butcher in awe. What is this offer? asked Jack. Magic beans, said the butcher stepping forward and opening the little green pouch. Jack peered inside. Three beans, he snorted. Three magic beans, replied the butcher. They'll most certainly change your and your dear mother's life for the better. Jack reflected for a moment. A thousand times more valuable, he thought to himself, and something that will help my mother. Very well, said Jack. He exchanged the cow for the little pouch containing the three magic beans and returned home. Jack told his mother of the butcher and the beans and watched in horror as her ashen face turned puce. You've done what? she bellowed. But, but, but mother, stammered Jack. The, the man said they were magic, magic beans and, uh, uh, and they would help us. Uh, and he stopped before he could finish the sentence. Even Jack, now hearing these words come out of his own mouth for the first time, could not believe what he was saying. It sounded absolutely ridiculous, and he was suddenly overwhelmed with shame. Oh, mother, he sobbed. I'm so sorry. I can't believe I have done something so silly. Can you ever forgive me? Go to your room, Jack, she said. You must think long and hard about what you've done. Still clasping the little pouch of beans, Jack turned and trudged back to his bedroom and closed the door. He tipped the beans onto his palm 
and then sat at the edge of his bed, staring at them. How could I have been so stupid? He said to himself angrily. I mean, look at them. Three blinking, measly little beans in exchange for a whole cow. What was I thinking? In a fit of rage, he clenched his fist and tossed the beans out of the window, then curled up onto the bed and fell into the deep sleep. When Jack awoke, it was morning. This particular morning was bright and sunny, which was strange because the sun did not stream through Jack's bedroom window as it usually would. On this particular morning, his room remained dark. Jack ran to the window. What met his stare took his breath away. A giant beanstalk rose like ten mighty oaks high up into the sky. They were magic beans, Jack exclaimed. Perhaps, perhaps they do hold the great riches the butcher speaks of. That was it. Without a second thought, Jack jumped out of his bedroom window and onto the giant beanstalk. Great leafy vines snaked around like ladders, making it ever so easy for Jack to scale the skyscraping stalk. He began to climb higher and higher and higher, not stopping for a moment to look down. This was probably just as well, for Jack was so high up that His cottage, the village, and all of the surrounding lands could be seen no more. Suddenly came a shrill voice. Jack, is that you? It said. Uh, yes, said Jack. A tiny, beautiful fairy appeared and hovered in the air just a few inches from the tip of Jack's nose. I've been waiting for many years to see you, Jack, said the fairy is I have a very important secret to tell you. Jack looked surprised. Oh, he said. You see, Jack, continued the fairy, your father was once a very wealthy man. My father's dead, said Jack. Yes, said the fairy. Then don't you want to know how he died? Mother said he was sick. Oh, my darling Jack, said the fairy. Your mother wanted to protect you. Your father was not sick. He was known across many kingdoms, for he owned the most rare and magnificent of all creatures, a mystical golden goose that laid one golden egg every single day. Jack was dumbfounded. So how did he die? he asked. The fairy, still hovering daintily in front of him, raised her arm and pointed into the distance. See that castle? Well, in that castle lives a giant and it is this beastly tyrant that ate your father and stole his golden hen you must avenge him jack and take back what is rightfully yours but before jack could reply she vanished jack took a moment to gather himself and then set off towards the castle and before long the colossal structure towered before him Jack had never seen a building so big. The steps leading up to the front door was taller than he was. The front door was as big as a mighty oak. And astride the door, staring menacingly back at him, stood the statues of two gigantic stone lions. Jack took a deep breath. Then without further ado, he lay flat on the ground and rolled under the front door. Jack stood up and dusted himself down. He looked around slowly, trying to take in the enormity of his surroundings. Huge, intricately carved wooden doors lined the hallway in front of him, and a rug the length of dozens of London buses lay upon the the cold stone floor. It was quite something to behold. And then, all of a sudden, the ground began to tremor followed by the sound of almighty footsteps. Thud, thud, thud. Suddenly a door crashed open. The giant appeared momentarily, with the golden hen clenched firmly in the palm of his hand. Without stopping, he marched and flung open the kitchen door. Jack darted across the hallway, making sure not to be seen, and followed the giant into the kitchen. Where's my dinner? bellowed the giant it's coming dear said his wife the giant sat down at the table 
and carefully placed the golden goose out in front of him. Jack quickly snuck behind a table leg. Oh, I do wish you wouldn't put that thing on the dinner table, said his wife, laying an enormous bowl of steaming stew in front of the giant. The giant glared at her. That thing is my golden goose, boomed the giant, and she's due to lay her daily golden egg at any mo. He stopped, then looking around very slowly. The giant raised his nose into the air, sniffed, and then hollered, Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Don't be silly, dear, said his wife. You haven't eaten a human since the day you stole that wretched goose. I can smell him, he roared. Eat your dinner, dear she replied calmly, before it gets cold. The giant ate his stew, and then without a moment's warning, his head hit the table, and he fell fast asleep. This is my chance, thought Jack. He quickly shimmied up the table leg, grabbed the tablecloth, and hauled himself up, then hardly daring to be breathe, for fear of the waking the giant, he crept toward the table top, carefully placed the golden hen under his arm, and made a beeline for the open window at the end of the table. By Jove, I've done it, he thought. Then to Jack's horror came an almighty scream from the giant's wife. Ah! A, 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 a boy! she cried. The giant woke with the start enraged by what he heard where he roared there screamed his wife pointing at jack who was now sprinting at top speed towards the window and he's got your golden goose the giant made a lunge for jack but it was too late jack escaped through the open window and made it safely down the beanstalk to safety after returning to the ground Jack cut down the magical beanstalk, and neither the giant nor his wife were ever seen again. And true to the fairy's word, the hen lay one golden egg each day. Before long, Jack and his mother had enough money to buy a new cow. And I am pleased to say, from that day forward, they lived a happy, long and prosperous life together. Well... That was very enjoyable. I hope you liked it. If you did, please like, share and subscribe. And if you want more stories like this, hit the notification bell. And if you want, please comment what story you would like next. Goodbye and see you next video.